Well, you've done a lot of theater, so what do you mean you've had stuff falling on you? Okay, so I was on the set of The Good Wife. Do you remember that show? Yes. So I was beginning, getting ready to do a, a like a, a six episode arc on there. And I'd just gotten back from tour from Australia, so I was ready to get back into TV, so excited. And the third day, a big piece of light equ- equipment fell on fell on me and threw me into, we were outside shooting. It was, um, and I fell into a curb, so I got hit in the face, cracked my nose, teeth, oh, and then man. a seven inch skull fracture and cracked ribs Good and a concussion. Grief. I'm lucky to be here. It really fell on you. Yeah, it changed my life. It in really what changed way? My, um, well, I used to have a photographic memory. It's getting, it's coming back, you know, but like I couldn't, my process is slower than I used to be really quick, but now my process is just a little slower. You know, with, with those kind of injuries, you, you know. I don't know. I've never cracked my skull. Yeah. This well, is good information. You haven't. So the first time I do that, I'll yes, be prepared. You call me because I'm your girl, <laughs> but it, it just made me in a way, not more thoughtful in a process, I think in some ways better because I'm so used to having to be result oriented when you're in TV or Broadway, it's like results now. Yeah. Instead of getting to have the evolution when we're doing music and finding stuff, it's result oriented. But now it's just like, I'm gonna take my time because I have to, it's just mm-hmm. the way it happened. It, it, it made me a little bit more emotional. I, I was never a big crier, mm. now I can cry. like. My mom said it could just be age too, but I noticed that it was it was overnight then, and it took me about six months to recover. Wow. Yeah. I get the emotion part. You still do a lot of theater though, so yeah. what about I mean repetitive memory? Does um, do you ever get out there and just go? What white noise? Make some stuff up. What? what you, well, you know when you do the I song. Call it mouth breathing. You start going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal that. Can I please have that? Not breathing. I have it on occasion. So there are certain songs in concerts, and I know you know what I'm talking about, that we have to do or we'll be shot. Uh-huh. Okay? We will be shot. Yeah. Um, Somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to do popular. I'm going to have to do a song called The Girl in 14G. There are certain songs associated with me, and we're lucky to have them. But first thing I do when I get on a set in theaters, I look up, make sure everything's battled down real good. And then, like, when we were doing Kennedy Center Honors for Reba, mm-hmm. I was just, I know all that crew. And I was like, is everybody, is everybody feeling okay? Everything's, like, battled <laughs> down real good. I can't help it now. Um, but, yeah. There, but it's also given me the freedom, too, because the voice is changing a little bit from a soprano into a deeper register, which is why I wanted to do this. No one tells you when you're a coloratura soprano that as you get older, your voice is going to change. No one tells you that. But it's good because it gives me an opportunity to have a whole new rep, more rep. I still yeah. got the high notes, but you know what yeah. I mean? It's just deepening. Do you right. know what I mean? I think it's I think it's great character, and I think you show it well on, on some of these songs Thank as you. well. Thank you. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is a pretty sexy cover you've got going here, little Kristen. And what about this? Huh? You're just like... Mm-hmm. Do you have any clothes on in this? What is going on? Here? I have a sheet on. A sheet? <laughs> a sheet. And my dad goes, because on the cover, it's me in a t- white T-shirt. And he goes... You showed this to your father? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. He was like, you know, damn it, Kristen. I can't go to 7-Eleven or church anymore now. Kristen, you forgot your pants. And I'm like, no, I did it on purpose, because I really wanted women to... Like, I did... It doesn't... I didn't do a lot of makeup. I did messy hair. I wanted to strip down thing. Uh-huh. And um, that's what I did. I just embraced it. I don't think it's fair to say this is a strip down thing, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm really, I don't know who arranged this. You're but, suspect. Well, <laughs> I've listened to them. I've actually listened to the music. Thank um, you. It kind of, it almost struck me, uh, almost 50s and 60s arranging yeah. and i looked at the cover i went "Ooh, so mm-hmm. let's see is she gonna pull in who and this is gonna we're gonna go thumping and bumping here and then it wasn't right. and and it's a place where you live in a real good way Thank you. um the, the way these arrangements go you know what i did i, I was listening to that song um a man Man that got away. Man that got away. And um, 
See, I have trouble with my memory, too. My memory's like a game show. We were laughing about that last night. It's like, okay, you know, it's that song that um, was by... Um, You're doing mine. By, yeah, it's like, uh, by so-and-so. Yeah, that's it. But um, no, not that one. Uh, yeah, you got it. You know, it's like, bing, you finally have a winner. Like, <laughs> I'm doing it now. I'm like, you it, know, the thing, <laughs> the thing. You mean your shoes? Yeah, the yeah. shoes. It's that. That's it, yeah. What's happening? So, yeah, you, you don't have to get hit in the head to have this issue. <laughs> Thank you. That makes me feel better. Anyway, th- that song is so cool and y- great performance on Thank it. You. And I got done with it. And I'm like, God, where did that come from? You know, wh- who wrote this? And so I pull up YouTube and, and I start surfing. Well, there's Judy Garland. And... And a star is born. Yes. And I went, oh, God, I forgot that song was in there. So I, I click on it. I was blown away at how she jumped on that so hard. Even from the first lines, she came so hard with everything. I know. And then, and I'm like, wow. I said, for most people, I would say too much, over the top. Mm-hmm. She was good enough to pull that off. Right. But then right next to it is the Judy Garland show. Yes. And she's performing that song. I go, ooh, got to hear that. Yes. So I clicked on it. Totally different performance. Right. Now, when she had to bring it during that performance, she freaking killed it. But when she started it, it's nothing like A Star is Born. She came from a place that was so down, so sincere. And I think you've, you've, uh, I've, I've noticed you yeah. caught that approach in a lot of this. And it's probably with a voice like yours, do you ever have to catch yourself and go, you don't have to fire all your guns right now, Kristen. Go start over and let's calm down. God, gigs. Yes. I have to have those conversations with myself. Like not every money note has to be, not every note has to be the money note. To get to Z, you want to start at A. You don't have to go to start at Z. Um, of course, in the Judy and Barbara lanes, those are, I'm comfortable in those, but I also wanted to have a place to go. Then, you know, that's kind of like life and evolution too, mm-hmm. like having a place to go. When I was younger, I just laid it out on the floor every time. Now I'm with things diff- deepening and we're talking hmm. about evolution here mm-hmm. in the music too. I'm I'm so glad that you noticed and took note of that because that was a, a song that I was like, do you dare touch it? Because in, in, in Broadway, it's like sacred ground. But I thought, yeah, Kristen, I, I had Alan Brombett do a different, a little bit different orchestral mm-hmm. arrangement. But as you know, I, I had a lot of it orca- orchestra, you know, orchestra mm-hmm. arrangements different. But yeah, that's what I tried to do with that. I thought, ease into it because it's a heavy message mm-hmm. and the words of the star and then you can blow it out. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I did. So thank you for like noticing that and noticing the difference in Judy on TV. That's one of the things that she understood that when we're on Broadway, we play to the back of the house. When we're on TV, the camera's right here. Mm-hmm. And she got that. Mm-hmm. And it was a good lesson for me. Nice. And in the studio. Mm-hmm. It's you made me think of it when you when you said your voice was changing some point. Because I think that's too where you where you really do find money. Oh, yeah. I mean, not physically, but that's where that place where you're down. That's where real emotion lives. I think so. You know, you can peel paint with that voice of yours anytime you want. You yeah. know, you you know you can do that. But when you get real, when you really find some place in here, you can deliver at a lower level. That's when people get sucked in, and and then you can roll their eyes back in their head. <laughs> That's what I'm discovering. Like when I go and do these shows, mm-hmm. and you know what I'm what I mean. It's like you give the people what they want, what they know you for and mm-hmm. expect. But now, you know, I had Desperado fully orchestrated, which is people don't do that. <laughs> but when then when I go low and do that, and in in, in my way with yeah. the orchestra, yeah, they're like, oh wait, she has that. This is this has been within the past five years. This has been going on, and like Julie Anders too, told me once when I was young and I was singing high E flats and Fs every, every like it was like <laughs> you know nothing for me. Now she's she's like don't give them away. Keep delving into that and embrace mm-hmm. it. 
So the women bec- that have come before me have helped me understand. Mm-hmm. I've learned a lot. Also, with life comes j- lots of joy and lots of pain. And, you know, when you're in your 20s, you don't know what you don't know. When you're in your 30s, you're kind of getting a clue. Mm-hmm. In your 40s, especially as a woman, you're like, holy crap, I'm now in my 40s. And I just, I just, now I'm in my 50s, or, you know, I've turned 51 just recently, and I'm like, embrace it. Like, I, I don't want to go back. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go back and go through all that. You no. know what I mean? No. Me either. Not yet. Not yet. Well, okay, some of it. <laughs> Well, there was that night in 1986. Was that, that was really fun. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think in this journey uh, is the thing you most look forward to? Um, it's been interesting for me because kicks. I've had to stay in. You know, for example, I when I was 19, I worked at Opryland, and I wanted to be a country music singer. That was my roots, gospel and country. And then my dad said, you have to get a degree. And I worked at Opryland, and I said, I'm going to stay here. He said, no, you're going to go to school. I said, no, no, I'm going to go ahead and stay here. He said, no, you're going to get in the car. <laughs> and um, he took me to back, and I ended up getting my degree in opera. So the lanes have been, I've been told, you have to stay in this lane. Mm-hmm. You have to stay in this lane. Like when mm-hmm. I come here, when I'm at the symphony, I'm totally accepted. Mm-hmm. And th- that's a lane that I'm embraced. Mm-hmm. But now what I'm doing here with Mm -hmm. this music Mm -hmm. and the artist I've chose to ask to be on it to Uh say, I don't know that there are any more rules. I'm going to do what all the things that my boys can do. And that's Leslie Gore and that's Doris Day and that's Judy and Barbara and a little bit of Aretha, actually Peggy Lee. And I'm just going to do it all in one thing. And it, I'm just going to do it. I just, I, maybe it comes with graduating from giving a crap so much of what others think. Do you know what I mean? I still care. I certainly do. Not to mention, nobody can nobody can throw stones at you for because of all the things you've accomplished. So it's you know you all it, it's it's the old adage of I save my money. You know it's like save, you can't you can't money. take that away from me. Thank you know you, you might. So you, you know, that's in the bag, and now I think, you know, it's it's the risk factor goes down so much. You know, it's you have that period in your life where if I screw this up, I may never work in this town again. You know, it's like I know. <laughs> Look what Johnny Cash did. Yeah. Like, not that he was over. He was never over. He was always going to be Johnny Cash. No one could take that from him. Mm-hmm. But at the end of his life, he had some of the best success of all. Mm-hmm. I think you should never discount anyone especially who's done something like what you guys have given the world, what I've tried to give the world, what other artists that we look up to and admire have given the world. Don't discount us because you never know. Like sometimes I go, maybe it's over. You know, you know, I'm talking about the crazy artist brain that we all have Mm -hmm. that says, what am I doing? You know, no, no. Two ears, one mouth. Listen to your gut. And we both know that I can talk. You know this about me because we're friends. You might have heard that about me, too. Listen, we could do this talk show for five more hours, okay? We lo- we both have diarrhea of the mouth. Thank My God. Dad used to say, hey, you want to turn that transmitter off for a minute and let your receiver work? <laughs> Another thing I'm stealing. Thank you. What was your dad's name? Le- Leon. I'm um, Leon. Same I'm as mine, it. yeah. I'm stealing it. Yeah, so yeah. That's what I'm learning. So this voice of yours not only sings, I mean, you, you got to tell me about, because I would love to do this sometime, you got to tell me about talking for animation. Uh-huh. Oh, you'd be perfect for it, by the way. Just but are saying. you, do you try to be a voice that's not you or is your voice just so much fun you just rock it and and then they let them build a character that looks like it well a lot of times they'll come to me and they'll be like you just talk i'm like but i'm playing a space ball so should i be offended is that what i sound like (laughs) i'm playing literally a floating space ball in this movie like i've done so many animated characters um tinkerbell you know you name it um I played a poisonous frog in Rio too, where I that sang opera. Um, I think what I've done when I first 
got on TV one time, people would write in and go, that voice, that voice, they would either love it or they would find it highly irritating. <laughs> like, did she suck, Kalian? Like, is that Betty Boop? And I'm thinking, okay, I'm never going to sound like Demi Moore. I want to. I just don't have any balls in my voice. It's how God made me. I cannot help it. But the things that make you different, like, okay, you sound like you. There's no confusing of who you are. Same with me. Same with Reba. Same with Dolly. I'll take that. I'll take the originality over. You know, it might not be for everybody, but it is fun to get behind a camera and let them video you while you create um, a character for an animated movie and then you go see the movie uh. and they you see a frog, a pink frog with lashes and lipstick and doing your hand movement. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. And they always say, oh, it doesn't matter. You can come look and however. I always look, try to look, not that I try to look like an animal or whatever, but I try to look and feel like it because I know they're going to animate mm. me. And you know I'm it an animated comes person. Out that way, kind yeah, of, yeah, you it's are fun. You need to do. That's good. Well, have you done? Well, get me a gig. No. What? No. That doesn't just... seem right. I know. That's what I was thinking. Oh, guess what I'm doing? You, you're you're my agent. I'm so ten percent. Let's though, do remember. this. I get ten percent or seven. Twelve. Oh, even better. <laughs> you just made my day. No, you've got. It's like a no brainer. Cool. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, all right. Let's do it. You mentioned Dolly. I got it. I mean, one of the most iconic songs of all time, I Will Always Love You. What did she say when you said, I want you to sing on this with me? I said to her, uh -huh. can we do Here You Come Again? Because uh, I love that song. She goes, well, if I'm going to do a song with you, I'm going to do one we wrote. And I thought, no, she's not going to give me that. She's not going to really? she give me I was like, she's not going to give me I was like. <laughs> like, I had that moment. And she said, let's do, um, well, you want to do I Will Always Love You? I was like, my hair extensions fell out. Oh, no. Um, I picked my teeth up off the floor, put them back in my mouth. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I do. And that's how that happened. And wow. I was shooting a movie, a Christmas movie, when it happened. And so, obviously, because of modern technology, um, we videoed back and forth. And I sent in my, my track to her. And she said, I just really like this one lick you're doing. Like, never heard that. And I thought, did I inspire her? Like, and then she <laughs> outsang herself on this track. I can't believe she did it. Still, I can't believe she did it. Wow. That was me growing up, probably the person that I was most compared to vocally. And because I just had that sound. Mm -hmm. kind of, but I never thought she'd say yes. How cool. And she did. How cool. I did the ugly cry. That, oh. I did. Got all weeped up. Yeah, and then Reeves. Oh, that's cool. And then Reeves. And Reba, you you picked a couple of fireballs to sing that thing with. I did. I mean, talk about some people that don't go f <laughs> from A. <laughs> Y'all kind of landed in, in G, I think. <laughs> I think <you're> like, right. <laughs> we didn't start like uh, so. Uh, no. Uh -uh. Um, it's funny because when Steve Tyrell and I, my producer, were not uh -huh. working on it, I said, I because I'm tipping my hat to Peggy Lee in it, mm -hmm. which she, a lot of people know, she spoke, I mean, I'm thinking, I can rub and screw up this whole house till it's shine like a dime. Be the butt, you know, I'm not gonna do Aretha mm -hmm. because I'm gonna do Peggy Lee, the mm -hmm. original source. But maybe if I got J-Hud to do J-Hud and let her start it, and then Jennifer I can- Jennifer Hudson for those who <laughs> aren't in the hip zone. Yeah, right, <laughs> Jennifer Hudson, right. And then I come in and I tip my, hat to Peggy and the Reeves come in does her does her uh -huh. it taught me well it showed me way back when when Emmy Lou and Linda and Dolly did that record two records actually mm -hmm. right I right thought records. well then yeah it's music is music and why can't we all be different and do it and I think it turned out yeah. I'm so happy with it no really cool my dad took me to see her um at the ambassador hotel when I was like Nine years old, maybe. What? Yes. What do you remember? Yeah, I just remember she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen, and and it was the whole thing was just so over the top, luxurious for a kid to just be sitting there going. I bet you were freaking out. I was. I was. Well, she, you know, she was really petite. In fact, 
I was thinking about the next record doing a tribute album to her uh, because be cool. I don't want people to forget like Peggy Lee. I think Lee. most people have, you know, and and that would be a great a great tribute because there's a lot of great music there. She could sing too. It but is. She got like you said to the heart of it. Mhm. Yep. And you know, my history obviously once I got in school and started chasing Cash and William Whalen and you know from where I came from uh but I always had a place in my heart for show tunes and and singers who could deliver that stuff and I think it's really awesome that you made this record. Thank you. That yeah. means a lot to me come from. You yeah. know you know that I admire you so and one of the things I think maybe we kiss met on is that when I see you perform it's kind of like I see not just a great musician. There's so many of them, right? And great voices and, and not very many unique, unique, special talents. But what I love so much about watching people that I admire is the performance aspect of it. And and I, I'm, I know it's with me, it's like Broadway thing, but I really like performers. That's what you do. That's what Garth does. I like it. It's it's called entertainment. It's also contagious. It's it is. real con- that that enthusiasm that you send out there, and when it comes back to you, it gets so inside of me when I'm on stage <laughs> that I just, I just go crazy. It's my jam. It's, I have fun. It's my know? jam. Yeah. I just have to say, I know that I'm talking too much, but Mm-mm. when I saw y'all... That's on... why you're here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I was like... <laughs> oh, no, I don't have to sing. I don't have to warm up. Um, when I saw y'all in Vegas, like it inspired me so much because, well, not only did we have the earthquake, but I just thought there's this is a great example of people who s- sing write their own stuff, do do what we want them to do, but also surprise us. Mm. That's what I loved so much. And you know, that's what I want my t- con- career to continue to be. So I want to say to you, I said it to you that night after, but first of all, just thank you for that. It is inspiring. And, and this was a year and a half in the making, and I thought, it when I left, I thought, it's, it's for the right thing, what I'm doing. I guess I just want to say that Good. to you. Job well done. Thank you. All right. Thank I'm you. so glad you came to see Thanks me. for the Skittles. You're not even supposed to have those. I stole them. I did not give those you, to you. But, you, but they're there. <laughs> they're there, and they're all different colors. I had to have them. All right. You can have those. You can have those.